Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the channel. Jesse here from the Subi Sanctuary. In this vid, I'm going to show you how to properly swap in an EJ20X, a JDM 2 liter engine, into a single AVCS car. So, let's get going. Alright guys, in this vid, I'm going to show you how to swap in an EJ20X, which is normally a uh, dual AVCS engine. This is a pretty uh, budget-friendly solution to replacing your EJ255 or your up to 2007 EJ257. And I'll show you the, uh, the differences and how you do it along with uh, pulling back the exhaust cam timing to closer mimic the EJ257 in this particular swap. So here we go. So naturally the first step is get your motor out of your car and then you will be basically stripping it down to a long block. So there we have all the attached items from the original 257. Then back to your EJ20X, again you will strip this down to a long block. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll resume. Alright, so there we are with the 20X down to long block form. Uh, I'm going to show you something here as a precautionary thing. Undo all your oil uh, banjo bolts and check for screen in them. If the screen's not in there, sometimes it does stay in there. Uh, this one, it is, it's not in there. Uh, this spot is a lot less accessible when the engine is all together, so it's unlikely this guy ever got removed. Um, let me see. It's, yeah, so there. You can see the screen in there. Uh, get that out of there and then put this guy back in. Go along. There's one on the other cylinder head and behind the timing cover. That guy's really tricky to get if you do decide to, but I guarantee that has a screen in it as well. Put on the exhaust manifold from the 257. That is very straightforward. Everything underneath of the engine is relatively the same. With respect to the uh, oil cooler, so this is the factory oil cooler on the 257. Uh, 20X, if you end up getting a 20X that came out of an automatic car, it will not have an oil cooler. If it comes from a manual car, it will have an oil cooler. This engine didn't blow up, it just has low compression in one cylinder. You know, if requested, I could take off this uh, water pump and the oil cooler and I could put it on that engine, but um, it's not exactly necessary for the goal in this. Uh, so this guy had a pretty recent timing kit on this engine, so I've taken it off. I have to take the timing kit off of this engine anyway to re-time it, so I'm going to put his relatively new kit back on this engine. Alrighty, with the timing covers off, you can see here we've got all our marks lined up and our crank lined up, our cam gears locked. And this is where it gets slightly tricky. So there's our original mark. There's our new mark. We're going to take the timing belt off and we're going to go counterclockwise. One tooth on both of the exhaust gears. So this one's going to go down and then this one's going to go backwards. All right, we are back with our belt off. Uh, I put on the pulleys from the other engine. I'm just squishing the tensioner before I put it back on. We have set our exhaust cams back one tooth. I made some little dots up there to match the original intake cam timing marks just for future service kind of thing. So now when you go and put your Timing belt back on. Um, this one still kind of had the marks visible. I went over them again. If you're gonna reuse the belt off this or your original motor or whatever and the marks aren't on it, 
make sure you mark everything before you take it off. It just makes life a lot easier. So this will be our intake cam mark. And here is still going to be the same mark on the exhaust cam on the timing belt because it's, it's not physically changing on the belt. It's just the cam itself. And what this does is it gets this uh, EJ20X closer to the exhaust cam timing on the non-exhaust AVCS EJ255s and uh, EJ257s. So that is the purpose of this. We've actually uh, tested this on a dyno and leaving it as is versus turning back the uh, exhaust cams to try and uh, better mimic the original exhaust cam timing. Uh, we got significantly more power and a lot more bottom end, which is uh, something you really don't want to lose too much of when it comes to doing a, a 2 liter in replace of a 2.5. So there we are, back with the timing belt all on. Uh, so there's our crank mark, intake mark, our new exhaust mark, and our other new exhaust mark, and our intake mark. So I'm going to pull my grenade pin. Um, I'm going to get these guys off, get my cam lock out, cover those back up, put the timing cover back on, and we're gonna work our way up to the top and show you what's next. All right, with our timing cover back on and our harmonic balancer back on, we are gonna move on to the top of the engine here. So your cam sensor, your crank sensor, your oil pressure sensor, they can all remain. Uh, same with the solenoids, they can remain. Uh, we have everything off. This is the original coolant crossover from the 20X. For some applications, uh, you could leave this crossover, but for this particular one, it is not the same for one reason. Uh, his original one has a tube coming out here that goes around to the throttle body, whereas on the 20X, the throttle body is actually offset over here, so it comes out there. So we're gonna take this off. When you take these off, always replace your O-ring underneath. Again, uh, all the PCV system from the 20X is stripped off the engine. I've moved over the uh, crank vent and breather from the 257. This particular fella had a uh, AOS, AKA a uh, spaghetti monster setup going on. So I'm gonna have a couple little uh, you know, unusual things compared to maybe your factory one sticking out of this motor. But again, all you want to do is mimic your uh, original engine's PCV system onto this one, which is uh, very straightforward. So, I mean, there's our breathers there. So we're going to put that back on. We're going to put that guy on. We're going to put some new O-rings underneath of it and move up from there. One other thing, uh, the 20X, always comes with a cooling port on the you know you might call it a cylinder four cooling mod they come factory on these engines so i'm gonna actually leave that right where it is for this reason on his engine he had a cylinder four cooling mod so we'll take that off we will get a, a clamp and we'll put it back on there and then uh, he still has that in use on the 20X, I mean, if you don't want to do the Cylinder 4 cooling mod, it, it only entails like a, a, a water hose from here to the outermost um, heater core line with like a plastic T fitting. If you don't want to do that, that's fine. Take out this fitting uh, on your engine. If you didn't have a Cylinder 4 cooling mod, you will actually have a plug right here that will fit into the EJ20X. So it would be the same plug as that. You can take it out and fill the hole if you want. All right, with the crossover pipe on and the PCV system and this water pipe, I still gotta clamp that uh, on, we are going to put on some new intake manifold gaskets. I got this guy reattached and clamped. It goes to the outermost heater core line. 
So I'm gonna grab some gaskets and we're just gonna simply drop on our intake manifold. All right, with the intake manifold on, everything plugged in, make sure you go around and you know really double check that you've plugged everything in. It's a lot easier to do now than uh, later. Uh, along with all our coolant lines, this is part of the AOS venting to this cylinder head. What I have left to do now is put the up pipe on and the turbo. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to um, replace the spark plugs. You can use the same, uh, you know, 255 or 257 spark plugs in this, like they're the same length in the EJ20X. I wouldn't recommend leaving unknown spark plugs in there. So I'm going to take those out, put some new ones in. We can put his coil pack in and then we'll. Uh, Get on the turbo and I'll show you a couple more little things here. So here we have our uh, spark plugs that came in the 20X. Um, there they are. Uh, these are a, a different grade. The ones I'm putting in are most like stock. They're um, an iridium. But I will show you, hopefully without breaking it here or dropping it in oil. They are the same length. We got the new plugs in and the coil packs back on. If you're wondering why I was showing you that, you know, the, the spark plugs coming out of this are the same length as uh, typical 255 and 257 plugs is because the domestic two liters here have a shorter spark plug. So some people might, um, you know, or order them for a two liter and it's not going to be the right plug. So. We've cleaned up our mating surface for our up pipe. We're going to put a new gasket on that. You're going to take the turbo, slide it down. And the finale here is going to be this uh, funky oil line on the EJ20X. Why you cannot just swap over yours from your 2.5 is uh, this one jumps out of the cylinder head, runs around to the solenoid up, has a connector there, and to the turbo. So you can see here on the 257, it stops there. It comes back out here as its own little individual line. This is the same style as like a EJ205 as well. Um, if you don't want to get as creative as you have to get to use this line, uh, you can just get a stainless fitting and a stainless braided line from here and put it to your turbo, but this line can be made to work. Hey, we got the turbo on with the up pipe there. Uh, you'll see here, this is the original 20X uh, water hose here that goes to the return of the turbo. You can see it's a, a tight fit. It's not really going to like going on to that tube. So I'm going to remove this, take the tube from the 257. As for my oil line, this is as it sits, so it's really not far off. Like all you got to do is just manipulate it in there. Um, make sure it's not hitting your uh, uh, wastegate arm and you'll be all set. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to change this little hose. All right, there's a comparison. This is the 20X uh, coolant return line for the turbo, and this would be a 255 or 257. So you can see it's got a bit more length and it wraps around to properly get on the tube there. So I'm gonna throw that on. All right, there we are back with the line on. You can see I got some, some clearance, she'll do. But again, if you don't wanna do this, configuration you can just get a, a simple braided stainless line and use that instead. I've got my uh, intercooler bracket back on. This is part of the spaghetti monster. So yeah, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of the spaghetti monsters myself. So I do not have too much more to do. I've got my water return line back on. I think the next step would be uh, pick this up with the crane and put on my uh, clutch and flywheel. 
Hey, here we are with the motor back in, everything done up. We got oil in it, don't forget to do that. And we got uh, some coolant making its way in there. And we are ready for the first fire up. We're gonna do like a key turn, let it sit for a bit to get the fuel up to the engine and uh, fire her up. Just purring away, you should not expect any check engine lights from uh, this swap. If you have check engine lights, well, you probably fricked up. Just doing her thing. check engine lights there so we're gonna let it run now until the thermostat opens up let it cool back down this car um, actually has the Japanese radiator so it doesn't have a rad cap here so these ones take quite a bit longer to, uh, to bleed Well, thanks for watching guys. If you found this helpful, and even if you didn't, uh, make sure you like and subscribe. It really uh, helps the uh, channel growth. And um, yeah, till the next one. Thanks for watching.